I've been using Python for about five years now, and one of the things I like about it most is how simple it is for beginners to learn. After learning the basics, one of the first things I did was create a Python module and learn how to publish it to PyPI, the Python Packaging Index. I followed a really good guide by Ben Crossan, but some of the steps are unfortunately quite outdated. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create and publish your own Python library. When creating a Python library, there are a few important things to be aware of. Two of the most important are classes and functions. Python is an object oriented programming language. This means that almost all of the code is implemented using a special construct called classes. Programmers use classes to keep related things together. A class is a code template for creating objects. Objects have member variables and have behaviour associated with them. In Python, a class is created by using the keyword class. A function is a block of organised, reusable code that you use to perform a single related action. Functions provide better modularity for your application and a high degree of code reusing, so if you need to use a block of code more than once, put in a function instead of writing it out all again. For this tutorial, we shall be mainly using functions. The Python library will be a simple calculator that does basic operations like add, subtract, multiply and divide, and it will take two numbers. We'll also go through how to create the different files you'll need to publish a Python library to PyPI. In summary, these are the README, Changelog, Manifest, License and Setup files. Let's get started by taking a look at how we write a simple Python library. Before we get started, there are a few things that we need to install and get set up. The first one is installing Python from the Microsoft Store. If we press search once we've loaded up the store and type in Python, it will show us a list here. Now select Python 3.8 because that's the latest one. And then press the blue install button. Now I've already got that installed so I won't really need to reinstall that. And then once we've done that, open up a web browser and go to the Visual Studio Code download page. And we'll be downloading this because it's a really good editor for, multi uh, for editing multiple file types of which we'll need to do for creating this library. So if we press download, that'll then download the setup file and then we'll need to install that. But again, I've already got that installed. The next thing we need to do is create a new folder in our documents once we've loaded up Visual Studio Code. So what we want to do if you want to go open folder and then just create a new folder in your documents and then call it whatever you want. I've already got that set up and I've got a folder called basic calculator. So that is our folder created, Python installed, Visual Studio Code installed. The last thing that we need to install is the Python extension for Visual Studio Code. So if you go to the marketplace which can be done by clicking this little square here. And then if we type in Python, and then install this extension here, that will allow us uh, to use the Python interpreter if we need to use that. It's just handy to have. So, once we've installed all of that, the first thing we need to do is create a folder within our folder that we just created. This will be hosting our Python library. So I'm going to call my Josh Basic Calculator. And then within that, we need to create a Python file, which is two underscores, I-N-I-T, and then two underscores again, dot P-Y. And what that will do is that's where we will put our Python module. So on the first line, we need to start by creating a function. So to do that, we use def, so def, and then we want to name the function, which is add numbers, and then we want to give it two parameters, num1, and then num2, then a colon at the end. Then, inside the function, what we want to do is add these numbers and return it. So if we do return and then num1 plus num2 and that will add those two numbers together. So if we copy and paste that first function and then change add to subtract that 
to the minus, copy it again for multiply, change that to the star, and then do divide, and then change that to a forward slash. There we go, that's our module written. So to test it out, it's a good idea if we just call one of the functions at the end, just temporarily. So if we do print add numbers, and then if we do five, six, that'll add five and six together. So if we save that, press run, you'll see that in the terminal, it will add those two numbers to make 11. So if we remove that last line, because we won't need that in the final library, and then we have our Python library there and ready to go. Now we have created our Python library file, what I want to do is create the different files that we'll need to actually package our Python library. The next one is the readme. So what we do is we just press this new file button here next to uh, our parent directory name and then change that to readme in caps .txt. And what you want to do is here is just put a short description of what your library does. So if I just put, this is a very simple calculator that takes two numbers and either adds, subtracts, multiply. or divide them and that would be our readme so that's that done the next one is the change log so if we do change log and that is another .txt file and what we want to do is that in there is just write um, a change log so what a change log is, is each time you release a new version of the library, um, you'll add release notes as to what's changed. So if we just write change log here, and then do some equal signs, and then write 0 0.0.1, .0 and then add the date in. So that is 1904.2020. And then under there, just put first release and then save that. The next thing is the manifest file. So if we do manifest.in and that's where we declare the different file types that we want inside of the module. So we want to include .txt files and .py files. The next thing we want to do is choose a license. Now for Python libraries, the one I recommend is the MIT license. Uh, you can choose different ones like the GPL license, but this is the one that we're going to go with for this video. So if we go to the MIT license webpage, copy the license there, go back to Visual Studio Code, and then create a file which is called license.txt and then copy and paste that in there and what we want to do is we want to change the year so 2020 and then change the name of the author the last file that we want to create is the setup file now this is really important because this is what the uh, tool that publishes the package to PyPI uses to gain all the information so it's important that we get it right so at the top here we have import setup tools and that will import the tools that we need to be able to get uh, our library set up. Here we have some classifiers uh, and this is in a list. So we have different classifiers like uh, what development status it is. So because this is a relatively basic library it's going to be in production. Uh, what the intended audience is, so education what the intended operating system is, so we'll put Windows here, what license we're using, and what version of Python it's intended for. Here we have the actual setup bit. 
So we need to change the example that I've put in the link in the description, the GitHub link, uh, to um, our library. So if we do Josh Basic Calculator, then it's the first version, and then just do a very basic calculator. And then these are the names of our readme and change log. And then URL. So if you've got a URL, you can put that URL there. Uh, but we don't necessarily have one for this. Um, put your name, email address, the license, uh, name the classifiers, which is what we've done at the top, keywords. So uh, we'll just do calculator there, uh, packages, which will find the package, um, and then install requires. So if your module has um, libraries that it depends on, um, then you put those there, um, because when you go and install the library pip, it will automatically install those uh, for the user. So that is the setup.py file done there. And that is the end of creating the library. So the next step is creating an account on PyPI. To be able to publish a Python library, we need to create an account on PyPI, which is the Python Packaging Index. So if we go to the account register page and fill in this form, so name, email, username, And then password we have now created our Python library and account on PyPI so what we want to do now is install the things we need to publish it to PyPI to do that open up a terminal and type in pip3 install setup tools and then twine and then press enter if you've already got it installed um, it will just run anyway, um, but it won't actually install anything. And once those two things are installed, we want to navigate to the folder which contains our Python library. So to do that, go cd uh, documents, which is where mine is, and then basic calculator. Now what we want to do is just check this is the right folder, so type ls, and we can see all our files are there and the directory which contains our Python library. Now what we want to do is to create a distributable, a distributable version of our Python library. So to do that, type python3 setup.pysdist and then press enter. And that will do everything that we need. Now if we press ls now, we can see there's this new dist folder here which will contain everything that we need. Now, to upload it to PyPI, we need to use a tool called Twine, and this will upload that folder to the Python Packaging Index. So to do that, the command that we need is Twine upload, and then two hyphens, and then we want repository URL. And then we want to type in the PyPI address, which is https upload.pypi.org forward slash legacy forward slash. And we want to do dist forward slash star. And that is the command that we use to upload our Python library. So if we press enter, It'll ask us for our PyPI username. And then our PyPI password. And that will upload our Python library. And it will give us a URL there to then look at our folder on PyPI website and here we go it has been uploaded for people to download via pip
So I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like more videos like this, then please hit subscribe, leave a comment below, um, and let me know what videos you'd like me to make next. Thanks for watching.